Well, since the destructive fire that engulfed the National Assembly earlier this year, a suspect's been arrested for taking a hammer to the windows of the Constitutional Court and other fires are erupting at key facilities. It's important to state that there's no definitive proof that these incidents are connected or even deliberate, but no one can argue that their timing does raise real suspicions. Well, let's talk to forensic investigator Dr. David Clatso on this. He's live with us from the UK. Uh, David, you really specialize in investigating fires, the causes, uh, and uh, how, how they could have started and the reasons behind them. In the three buildings that stand out here, we're looking at Vatikluf Air Force Base, Parliament and St. George's, both I all three iconic. Is it easy to set those buildings alight? Do you just chuck a match in with a bit of petrol? How experienced do you have to be to start these fires? Well, uh, depending on the material that you've got at hand, uh, it would it, it would be proper to put a caveat into that question. For instance, depending on the fire load, it's very easy with one match to set a hayrick alight. And the reason is that the, the material is there very ready to burn and very easily set alight. A little more difficult to set a building alight. And uh, importantly, it would appear, and I'm not sure whether any proper investigation has been done into the Parliament fire, it would appear that there was more than one fire there. But in the case of Parliament, there are a number of coincidences which are concerning. Those coincidences are the fact that the sprinkler system was turned off. Generally speaking, the sprinkler system is chained open in a building. There are chains on it which prevent people from switching it off. The second thing is that the fire doors were non-operational and were clicked back. Normally in a building such as that, the fire doors have got an automatic magnetic catch on them, which allow the moment the alarm goes off to uh, close the doors and prevent the spread of fire or limit the spread of the fire. The third thing is it seems that the alarms weren't working. And the fourth thing is it seems that it was just rather coincidental that the security guards were all on, on, on not, not, not operational that day. Now, those four things together start to put together a, something which cries out for proper investigation. Why and who allowed all of those to happen? And that's an iconic building. Now, the, the next fire which we haven't spoken about is the fire which damaged the library at UCT and other buildings. And it's very fortunate that more buildings didn't go up in flames. Here's another example of, of a failure to... Uh, implement proper security situations, both by UCT and by uh, the Parks Board. The alien vegetation that grows up along that south uh, southwestern border of UCT um, should never be allowed to get that close. And all the touchy-feely business about letting old trees to stand near the border is is not great when you consider the cost to the university. I see also that the university is threatening legal action against Parks Board <clears throat> for the use of the helicopters uh, or the failure to use the helicopters timelessly. And again, this is not the first time Parks Board have been negligent in that respect either. <clears throat> in, in previous occasions, the, the, the rental agreements uh, with the, the helicopter operating companies uh, were not complied with. And I'm thinking in particular of the fire which went from Musenberg to Hart Bay a few years ago, which I did investigate. <clears throat> now, there again, uh, fees weren't paid timelessly. And and I, I'm pretty sure that if we look into it, you'll see that there are problems with those rental agreements. David, uh, sorry. I'm, I, sorry, to, I don't like interrupting guests, but I want to... I want to bring you back to Parliament, St. George's Cathedral and Vatikluf. UCT is, of course, important. But in, in all of those incidents, we're pretty much seeing homeless people being blamed for setting edifices alight. Uh, how likely is this really? How likely is it that some homeless person has gone in there with a match and set a few papers alight and man managed to cause an inferno? 
I think it's unlikely, and I think that it needs to be investigated. And if the police have arrested somebody, it's almost it's 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 almost proof of his innocence so quickly after the event without proper investigation. Um, the police have not got a good track record of of this sort of crime and and investigating this sort of crime. Um, you you will remember that. They're quick to arrest people for various things, and they have to release them uh, subsequently. So, again, until until the the innards of this are fully investigated, I would not believe a word coming out of the police uh, camp. Um, right. I would want to have a look at that more more personally. And and by the way, it's not that easy to run in um, unless you've got ample time and space and possibly some accelerants and set Parliament to light. I think the cost in Parliament was something in the region of a couple of billion rand, um, which uh, damage done. Um, and that more than offsets the, the cost of the security guards that uh, were supposed to look after the place over the weekend. Oh. So one's got to ask the question, who's behind all this concatenation of negligence and incompetence that we see happening in our beloved country. Concatenation. Taps and I are going to use that. That is a brilliant word. Thank you for so much for your insight. And uh, let's hope that there are better investigations done. That was forensic investigator Dr. David Klatso. Thank you so much.